Listen up. Let's go, let's go. Welcome to Trojans Live, the exclusive USC Trojans Coaches Show. From the four-yard line, and Branch slowly working up the field. That turns on the Jets, looking for a block at the 50 and gets it. Down the sideline to the 40, 30, cuts it back in at the 20. He's going to go all the way. 96 yards. Zachariah Branch, how do you do? With behind-the-scenes insights and breaking news from the student-athletes who play for the Cardinal in goal. Looks left, looks over the middle, throws it. Trojans Live is presented by Monster Energy. Unleash the base. Now, live from Los Angeles, here are your hosts, Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, and Max Brown. Hello and welcome to Trojans Live, presented by Monster Energy on AM 790 KBC and across the USC Trojans Media Network. Thanks for joining us again on a Monday night. I am Jordan Moore alongside Sean Cody, Max Brown, and the head coach, Lincoln Riley, back with us. USC's head coach interview is presented by iTrust Capital, the official crypto platform of the USC Trojans. Welcome, coach. Uh, Three, you know, going into the bye week. Now coming out of the bye week, we get back to it here with the trip to Arizona State. What did you feel like you accomplished in the bye week? How'd that go? It was a good week. Um, I thought the guys did a good job with their approach. Bye weeks, as, as we all know, that have been a part of it. Bye weeks can can go a few different ways, and, and it comes down to I think the team's approach during that time. And are you are you out there to get work done, or, or are you just punching the clock? Um, you know, and excited about having. You know, a few days off on the weekend and, and, and all of that. I thought our guys handled it well. We pushed them hard. We, we got after it practice-wise all the way up through Thursday um, and then gave them uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday to get a chance to get away from it. And it was obviously great to get back on the field today. We, I think I think this team was uh, – there's definitely some areas that we needed to get better at. There were some guys that needed to, that, that needed to take advantage of the time to get healed up. Um, but I think this team – was was very eager to get back on the field today. They're ready to go play again, and and honestly, I think they're excited to go play on the road. We haven't had a chance to go do that yet, and uh, they're they're very very much looking forward to that opportunity here uh, this week and over the next several weeks. Coach, quarter way into it here, three games. You get to evaluate that over the bye week. You got the chance to play a lot of players, see a lot of guys. What's your evaluation after the first three? Oh, we I think we made improvements in in all three games. Uh, certainly, I, I think you saw a, a, a steady climb. Um, we, you, you're correct. We got to play a lot of players, and, and knowing that we're going to need a lot of guys, we not we may not play that many guys in every single game, uh, but we're going to need different lineups and different sets of guys as we go through this this journey um, and this 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 big stretch of games that's coming up for us. So, I think that'll pay dividends as we get further down the line. They're still. You know, there were still so many kind of target areas for us on all three sides of the ball. Uh, penalties, I know, certainly was a big, uh, a big conversation point for us after the previous game. Felt like that, you know, we, we got a little bit careless and reckless at times with the penalties, and um, that that's that's something that we can't do. It'll come back and bite you um, in in big games and big moments. And so, uh, really tried to take some steps there. Uh, yeah, and then I mean, each side. You know, it's we're not doing anything so good that you don't need to still spend time on it. And and then there's still, you know, I think a lot to, to build in terms of the continuity with these groups and getting them ready for the next challenges that we're going to see. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think it was just a, we were very comprehensive, I think, in the review. There was a lot to work on. Um, but again, I think our guys approach was 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 good. And I and the other thing that I think you still feel there's still a lot of competition going on mm. with this team. And there's a lot of guys that are like fighting for spots, fighting for playing time, and that's going to continue. And it was not a kind of casual, you know, uh, kind of happy-go-lucky type feel out there. I mean, there's a lot of guys that are straining, that are in battles, and they know it. And, and um, they've got to bring it every day or somebody's going to replace them. Yeah, how much did that depth change the overall – vibe or maybe even your approach to the bye week compared to last year where maybe you're having more depth concerns and obviously it's unique having a bye in general this early on in the season I guess just how much how much different was this bye week compared to other bye weeks you've had in years past it, it was it was definitely different I think you know we were able we had less guys because we're playing more players and we have a little bit deeper roster we, we had less guys that we were maybe trying to get healthy or not pumping a ton of reps into them 
Um, we have more position battles ongoing. And then, and then the opportunity to continue to rep a lot of these younger guys that you're developing for whether it's you know some point this year, whether it's for in the future, like that talent base is there. And so you you know every day there was I think a sense of urgency on our part, the staff to make sure we're creating a block of time to continue to develop these guys because there's a lot of guys there that are going to be really good players, and and we got to keep their we got to keep their arc on an upward climb. You're listening to the head coach, Lincoln Riley, on Trojans Live. Uh, coach, we haven't talked to you since the Stanford game. I, I asked you at halftime of the Stanford game, you know, I asked you sort of about the balance of the offense because you were running and passing so well, and you said if that's the case, that means the offensive line is really dominating on, up front. Expand on that, and, and how do you feel about that group after, after three weeks? Yeah, we're starting to get some continuity there. Uh, we are. I feel like that lineup has started to, to settle a little bit. Um, you could tell – I think you could really tell this was the the first time that you know multiple weeks in a row that that we played a lot of the same people in the same positions and and some of that continuity did start to take hold. I thought with that you saw us you know trigger and cut loose and play a little bit more aggressive at times. So they did a good job. You know they did. They really you know controlled the game uh, on that side of the ball. The you know run the run opportunities were were certainly there. You know they protected the QBs. They were good in the screen game. I mean they were. You know, they played well. It's exciting to see that group start to take some steps. We know some other challenges and bigger challenges are obviously coming down the road. But um, yeah, the kind of the first real sense of continuity um, since maybe last year. So that was good to see. Next trip, uh, next game here, first road trip of the year, and that always brings uh, about new challenges. Doesn't matter really who the opponent is, but always the first trip with a new group of guys being back, you know, in a new environment where not everyone's cheering for you, but they're rooting against you. What are, what are some of the challenges you think this team will uh, be come up against this weekend? Yeah, I mean, first you're going to be, you know, you, you go on the road, you're going to be every other team's biggest game. Yeah. I mean, that's just part of, it's one of the great things of playing at USC, right? And it's something that you have to embrace. And and uh, and then you said it. I mean, this is a challenge that this team has not been on together yet. And uh, yeah, we we understand this is the old deal. Like you can go watch teams on tape, and then you know if you're at a place like SC, you go play them. Like. You're not always going to see that same team that you saw on tape against whoever else. Like you're, you're going to get their very best. You're going to get their best crowd. You're going to get the best effort out of the players. I mean, like you, you got to. If you don't anticipate that, you're you're missing the you're missing the boat here, and and you're set up to 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 get surprised. And so that's that's obviously I think a big point for us is understanding that that should not catch us by surprise. Um, you know, the, and you know everybody again wants to write all these stories about what it's going to play out like. Like you just, you just got to go play, and you've got to go embrace being the villain a little bit. You've got to go embrace um, the the different vibe in the stadium, the travel, all of that, and um, different dinners. Oh, man, I used to hate those away. Dinners. You would ask for the dinners. <laughs> the away hotel night meals were so bomb, though. At least they were when I was here. They're typically pretty good. Yeah, the guys do well. So um, yeah, so no, it's. We're ready. I mean, three great games in the Coliseum to get us started. And, um, you know, Saturday night, uh, the, the the Stanford game, you know, was a, was a cool vibe in there. I mean, it was it was uh, that place was rocking. It was a lot of fun. And yeah, and I think this team is, is eager to get on the road and, and go face some of those challenges. And uh, yeah, that's you know we showed the team. I mean, this is college football, you know, roughly 70 percent of the time the home team wins mm -hmm. and there's reasons why, um, and the challenge is there. Like, if you want to be on a great team, you have to go prove it on the road. Like, because I mean, what does that tell you? It tells you bad teams, they're not going to win much of anything. You know, good teams are going to win most of their games at home, but the big difference between good and elite is the elite find ways to win on the road. I want to ask you about your uh, backup quarterback. Uh, it's been fun seeing Miller more so in these first few weeks. Uh, my first reaction is that he looks comfortable back there. He's able to operate the offense. Where's he at, and where's that that whole room at um, behind Caleb? Yeah, he's, he has progressed well, and it's been good to be able to play him a little bit more. We hope to be able to play him more in year one, and, and we just had so many games that ended up being close. And uh, so, yeah, he's he's obviously been able to get some meaningful snaps. He's taken advantage of it, and he's he's played very well. Um, so, yeah, been good to see him. And I hope to be able to continue to, to play Malachi some as well. Um, that that experience for him will be, you know, will be invaluable. And he's getting a lot of great reps through the week and developing well. And and then uh, and Jake has continued to do the same. So yeah, now I got four guys in there. I feel good about and they're competing hard. And and like I've told you guys before, it's a 
we've all been in those position rooms. Like this room has a great vibe. I mean, they push each other. Um, they compete with one another, but they 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 really you know help each other out too and support one another, and you can feel that. A little Pac-12 after dark action this week. USC, Arizona State. We'll talk more about that with Coach next. Monster Energy, the official energy drink of USC. Unleash the Beast and Trojans Live is sponsored by Pachanga Resort Casino. Proud partner of USC football. Back with more Trojans Live next. Of investment. Looking for the play of the day? That's easy. Fight on to victory with USC and fly on faster with ONT, the fastest and easiest airport experience in SoCal. Not to mention, Ontario International Airport has over 65 nonstop flights to more than 20 major destinations with less traffic coming in and out. In other words, getting here is a breeze and so is following our Trojans anywhere the season takes them. Because let's be honest, faster is always better when it comes to your airport. Start planning your next journey today at SoCalSoEasy.com. Cue up the band, because Trojans Live is back exclusively on your home for Trojans football, AM 790 KABC. Hey, Trojan fans. Did you know the Ralphs app gives you easy access to weekly sales and personalized coupons, and you can earn fuel points, too? Check out the app today and save while you cheer us on to another great season. Ralphs, proud partner of USC Athletics. Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Max Brown, and the head coach, Lincoln Riley. And, uh, Coach, we had Marshawn Lloyd on last week, and it made me think of a question. As you bring in players now in this new world of you're still bringing in freshmen and you're also bringing in the portal, do you evaluate players that you bring in the portal almost more specific to their skill set and saying, hey, you know, I want a back that has a little bit more burst or is, has great hands out of the backfield, as opposed to a freshman where you're going, I just want a really talented player and we'll figure out who he is over the course of his career. Do you start looking at plug and holes? I mean, we talk about a guy like Bear Alexander. How differently are you, look, are you evaluating talent between the freshman and the transfers? Yeah, I think it's a little more, I think it's a little more specific, right? Like I, you... You've had a chance now to evaluate these guys in college, um, and so you're, you've been able to see their skill sets develop a little bit. So you maybe have a little bit better idea of what they are now. Bringing in a you know one year graduate transfer versus bringing in you know somebody like Bear that was just a true freshman yep. and still has a you know a, quite a bit of career in front of him. Those those are two very different things. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's certainly more specific. Um, and and uh, the other part of it is, I mean, once a guy's transferred in, I mean, the reality is, I, it's just the truth. Like you know that you have them, you know, probably for the rest of their careers, right? And so, you know, the, the obviously the other side, you 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 intend on it, you hope to, but in this day and age, who the heck knows, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think there better be something there you like. 
as far as a, uh, when you're recruiting and evaluating a transfer, there better be something that you like, and it, you better have a pretty confident feeling that it fits what the need of that next team is going to be. Coach, didn't get a chance to talk defense about that performance against Stanford with you. I, you know, I thought it was a tremendous effort out there, especially the front, and I thought the safeties had a, had a tremendous game. What did you think about that performance and how, how your defense seems to be trending in the right direction? Yeah, no, guys played well. I mean, you know, Stanford had, had put up a number of points the week before in week one, and, and you know, we, we just really suffocated them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did. We just we, – we eliminated a lot of the a lot of the run game. You know, made them a little bit one dimensional. Guys just just played well, flew around. You know, you mentioned the safeties and nickels. I thought we were really physical at that position. I mean, we hit. B Shaw was B Shaw was hitting. Hammer. I mean, we had <laughs> we had a lot of just really physical plays um, that I thought really stood out. Safety position, as you said, the front. Um, we did a nice job you know, for the most part on the night, controlling the run, pressuring the QB. Um, and, and so, yeah, no, I mean, it was it, this day and age, you, you hold the, you know, any opponent, especially a power five opponent to, to kind of what we did, then there was a, it was a job well done. Sure. Coach, this week you're going against the youngest head coach in FBS college, uh, college football. And uh, if we rewind the clock six, seven years or so, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, that was you um, at Oklahoma at 33. Yep. Uh, what advice would you have for your 33-year-old uh, self as a head coach? And what challenges are unique, not only for any first-year head coach, but specifically when you are that young? Yeah, I'm, I was glad when – I can't remember who took it, you know, the, the title from me, but I was glad when it happened. So That's a sweet quit title to have. It was, it was cool for a while. It was like, all right, I'm not the, I'm not the young guy. There, there's a, I have a pretty good story. I'll put it in my book. It's not for uh, – it's not for – but there's a, a pretty good story about – a veteran coach that I went against pretty early in my career that gave me the uh, um, "boy, you are young" when we when we shook hands at, at, before the game. I was <laughs> I was pissed. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that one will be in the book. The, uh, the the advice, man you you have to you have to just be yourself, and you you got to continue to believe in yourself. You're when you're a head coach the first time. Like I, I can still remember the feeling. Like I I still don't take losing well, but I remember like the first game that we lost when I was a head coach, I remember like just a, a different kind of losing feeling. Like there's losing and then there's like, I'm responsible for all of this. <laughs> and then, and then there's and losing with that. And I mean, and you know, we didn't, we didn't lose too much. Thank goodness, man. But it, it's, uh, you can, you can start to doubt yourself and, job you're doing the direction all that quickly and you got to be really really careful and I I mean it shoot at the time I mean for me we we got beat and we were still a I don't know what we were top you know it's probably six or seven team in the country and still had you know a great year in front of us but I remember feeling like god I mean one loss I remember feeling like this is the end of the world <laughs> I mean seriously and it was just like I had to have some people thank goodness I had some great people in my corner um you know roughing and Coach Stoops and Coach Switzer and all those guys had done it that kind of helped pull me out of the dumps a little bit, Max. I mean, I was just like, holy cow, I, I don't know if I can do this. And, uh, and I, I, I would imagine that every first-time head coach has, has felt that a little bit. And you just, you know, I would say you don't get used to it, but you, you learn to fix what you got to fix and then continue to have confidence and belief in the things that you know are good. And, and, and you got to stay the course and set the direction. And uh, so, yeah, any, any young coach that's going through that the first time, that's maybe everybody else doesn't feel that way, but I damn sure did. Yeah. Well, great question to end on for this week. Thank you, Coach, for your time. Rajon Davis is next. Uh, coach is headed to Tempe. First road game of the season coming up 7.30 p.m. kick time. Trojan Tailgate Show will go on at 5.30. We'll be back here on Trojans Live next Monday to break it all down with Coach. As I said, Rajon Davis is next on Trojans Live. <laughs>
It's like a sneak peek into the Trojan's locker room. Without the fear of, you know, getting arrested. It's, it's Trojans Live on your home for Trojans football. AM 790 KABC. Yeah, 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 real quick. I've been going to the top. The best in the game is brought to you by Old Dominion Freightline, official freight carrier of USC Athletics, helping the world keep promises. Our best in the game this week, Rajon Davis joins us now. Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, Max Brown. What's going on, Rajon? Nothing much, man. How get get that mic up on you so we can hear you nice and loud. <clears throat> it's it's great to have you and just great to see you off to such a, a big-time start this season. Well, what's it felt like for you? You've had to wait your turn a little bit, uh, but you've really seized your opportunity. How's the season felt for you? Um, this season has really been a dream come true for me, um, just being able to like start from my first uh, career start for Trojans. So it's been a dream come true, I would definitely say. Um, we're just going to continue to build on this uh, this 3-0 and season. So just continue growing and continue getting better each day at practice. Ray John, talk about your mentality a little bit. Obviously, you come into the season and you're, you're running with the twos. You're you know watching the guys work out there. Some injuries come out and you got to be ready to go. What's what's the mentality take to be you know ready to go when your number's called and it's time for you to step up? Um, the mentality is just always always be ready when your number is called. Um, that's what my parents teach me. Like you never be you're not you're never gonna be able to tell like if you're gonna start or not. So if you put in the work and you're uh, out there practicing hard, you'll be ready when your number is called and uh, just be able to make plays when you get out there and show uh, you're ready. You like you you belong out there. Yeah, it's always a pet peeve of mine as a player um, when I was a backup and then you get in the game and you have success and then this narrative builds of like oh, he's finally comfortable and he's finally confident and all that. And the media runs with that. Even the coaches might say that. Because for me, it's always like, man, I, I've been this way. I've been confident. I've been doing this. You just haven't seen that. How much of it, like, do you relate to that at all? Or is there something to be said about, hey, I needed those maybe, you know, learning points earlier on in my career to get that confidence and to get to the point that you're at now where it's so exciting moving forward? Um, I would definitely say I needed those points just because in high school I wasn't like an off-ball linebacker. I was more on the ball. So definitely taking those learning points that I was learning from uh, Coach Odom, just building that throughout the year, uh, like my sophomore year, building those uh, like those those mentality, um, like those motions, playing inside linebacker off the ball, reading those pullers and stuff. I feel like that helped me out. Um, and just helped me get more used to playing behind the ball. But definitely having that confidence of, like, I've been here before. I know how to, I know how to play football. Like, I've been playing football since I was five. So just having that confidence out there, like, you know, it's still the same way, same football you've been playing your whole life. So definitely I would say that confidence part does play a big, big factor. You're listening to Rajon Davis on Trojans Live, junior linebacker. Uh, you mentioned your parents earlier. Uh, who, who do you turn to? Who, who gives you that wisdom and that ear? Uh, you know, maybe during some frustrating times in, in the in the first couple of years, you you were recruited by a different staff, so you had to already go through a coaching change. I mean, it, it certainly hasn't gone completely according to plan. So, who's in in your corner that that you lean on to to talk to about these things? Definitely, my uh, my father. He sends me like motivational quotes every day. Uh, just wakes me up with like good morning texts. I love you. Uh, have a great day. Like get the day started. So definitely, I'll say my father is like my big mentor. He pushes me to get better every day. Don't quit on myself. Uh, Practice hard. Like when you get your opportunity in practice, you got to take advantage of them. And then if you practice hard and make plays in practice, you'll be out, you'll be able to play on the field. So that's he's my my biggest mentor, definitely. In this modern age of football and defense, it seems like the the linebacker has to take on a put on many hats, right? The linebackers used to come downhill and stuff the run, and now mm-hmm. it's such an air raidy game, and you got to play play everything. What's a great linebacker in your mind, and what does Coach Odom teach you about being a great? What is it? What are the all encompassing features of a great linebacker? <clears throat> One thing that we watch, or like one player that we watch, is Fred Warner. Yeah. Uh, so he's like a big. That's like Coach Odom thinks he's like the best linebacker in the league. I would so, not disagree. Yeah, we always watch him, uh, him and uh, Greenlaw and the 49ers, how they play, and then also the Bills. So we like we watch a lot of NFL football. Watch how they react to pullers, how they play in zones, uh, break on the ball. So I would definitely say those those like linebackers are like big in our eyes. Um, and like Ray Lewis, he also loves Ray Lewis. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like that's those three are like our big, uh, like big watches that we watch. And then uh, we also watch Brian Cushing and dudes like that from SC days. Yep. Does your dad send you Ray Lewis uh, motivation oh, yeah. stuff at all? He sends you Ray Lewis, Eric Thomas, like anybody that's like super, super motivational. He sends me that, like Air Reed too. A lot of dudes. That'll get you fired up. I didn't realize that uh, you primarily played on the ball in high school. Um, Outside of just the obvious, and that you have, you know, you have a defensive line in front of you. Mm-hmm. Unpack the the transition there from, you know, on the ball to off the ball, and what was the biggest challenge there getting used to that new position? 
definitely um, the difference would be like playing against pullers and like playing against full zone. Cause you know, when you like, when I was on the ball, it was mostly I'm contained rush. Like I'm coming off the ball. Go. And, and, yeah, go, <laughs> get the, go get the quarterback, go get the football. So that's really, it was more of uh, just a lot, not a lot of thinking. Like he said, um, just now when you off the ball, you got to read pullers, you got to drop in the zones. You got to uh, play downhill at the same time. You got to be able to read your keys and play fast. Like that's just a big difference. I would say from like playing high school to college, definitely. You're listening to Rayshon Davis on Trojans Live. There was not a ton of positives to take out of that Tulane bowl game defensively, but you were one. I remember you popped late in that game. How much did that give you just a little bit of an extra springboard into the offseason that, that you were able to be out there and, and, and look comfortable and make some plays on that stage? Uh, definitely that game helped me just get comfortable out there just because um, – that was like my first time playing in like the third quarter. Like it wasn't, it wasn't no uh, like fourth quarter minutes. So getting out there and playing, playing out there, it was like made me more comfortable and just helped me out for spring ball. Just because I had already had that feeling before, I was able to make plays and uh, it just kind of slowed things down for me. I would say also important to get that mental break during the bye week. How'd you how'd you pull away from football for maybe a day or two? What'd you get? Uh, so I went to my friend's birthday party, Tone, he's on the team. We went there uh, Friday night and then Saturday, I just hang out with some group of friends, chilled, went on the rooftop, hit the hot tub. It was just getting away <laughs> from football. Now it's time to go, man. It's time to go. Mm -hmm. Is the bye week a little different when you have a uh, established role now versus maybe in uh, years past? This was probably like a game week for you as, oh, yeah. a, as a backup. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely we had like a hard practice last week. Like all three of our practices were hard. And then Thursday we kind of tuned it down. But uh, just you got to stay. Like when you when you know you're getting in that game, you know you got to stay in the playbook. You know you got to watch film. You like uh, every day you still got to watch film. You can't just take a day off. Otherwise the, the opponent will uh, gain on you. Well, it's great watching you thrive out there. Looking for more this season. Rajon Davis and the Trojans will take on the Sun Devils on Saturday. When you've got good beer and good vibes, it's all buena. Stone Buena Vesa Salt and Lime Lager is Baja inspired and imported from San Diego. Located near you at findoutstonebrewing.com. Back with more Trojans Live, the head coach of USC women's soccer, Jane Alaconis, is next. <laughs> It takes hard work to be the best in the game. Planning, commitment, resilience, sweat. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of USC Athletics, helping the world keep promises. Covering all things SC. Touchdown, USC! 
Tennessee. It's Trojans Live on your home for Trojans football, AM 790 KABC. Back on Trojans Live, the Women's Spotlight is brought to you by Sprouts Farmer's Market. Open seven days a week. Visit your neighborhood Sprouts for good-for-you groceries and great prices on the freshest produce. Jordan Moore, Sean, Cody, Max Brown, and Jane Alaconis, the second-year head coach of USC Women's Soccer, joins us again. A 4-2 and two start through a non-conference play. You head to Utah this week to begin the league schedule. How do you feel about your team going into league? Uh, I love this team, the group of players that we have this year, just each and every one of them, um, amazing soccer players, high soccer IQ, uh, very smart, hardworking young ladies. Um, So each day with them, I'm really grateful. Going into conference, um, it'll be a fun soccer playing match against Utah. Um, Utah is really good, so uh, we come out and we'll give them the best game that we possibly can. But I feel really good about each and every player on our roster. Coach, uh, year two under your belt here. How do you compare year one versus year two is trying to install your culture and, and getting that all rolling? How's year, how's year two going? Uh, even just you, you guys saying year two, I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, it's been awesome. Like, number one thing is to have a good staff around you, and I love my staff. Um, so just being able to roll out each and every day a little more of how we want to play, who we want to be. Uh, making sure that practice is a highly competitive environment and and living out like exactly who we want to be. So it's it's been awesome yeah. year two. Do you what what do you uh, what you learn from year one that you're taking into year two, or did anything surprise you from that first year? Uh, everything, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get organized. Always have time for players. Always have the door open and just work as hard as you possibly can because uh, you get one shot at the season and. You just want to present the best that you possibly can for the team, for the university, uh, and and for ourselves, too, just to know that we gave it our best every day. Uh, One cool thing I like about soccer, I don't know if you knew this, Sean, but in soccer, when you play your former team, unless you had some animosity and you score a goal on them, you don't celebrate. Okay. So it would be like that's a, that's a thing. If, yeah. So it would be like if you you playing for the Texans. Yeah. Big if play, you were to get a sack against the Lions, I would just you calmly would just, walk back. Exactly. Okay. Wouldn't, wouldn't, that you, wouldn't happen. That wouldn't happen. No. 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 In, no. in your case, I take my jersey I only, off. I only bring this up, Coach, because you had a very unique experience. Must have been an emotional experience for you. You go back to Duke. You know that's that's your alma mater. Your mentor's still there. You beat them in their house. You get this incredible top five win. What was that like for you emotionally going through all that? Yeah, I'm, I'm a really proud Dukey, and what Robbie's done with the program is amazing. Uh, when I was there, we were good, but now they're always top five, top ten. Uh, Robbie, being my coach, I think was what made it really emotional. Uh, we're super close. I think he calls me about once a week. <laughs> um, he, he's been there for me through good times, bad times, everything in between, uh, he and his wife. And so uh, that, that was it, a hard one, but I told him the best way to honor him was to give him a good game. Uh, we went to breakfast together and spent a lot of time together when I was there. So I was proud and, and grateful that the team gave Robbie a good game and uh, left it all out on the field that night. Coach, getting into conference play, and how, how important is it for you to get off to a, a good start in conference play so you can kind of meet the goals that your team wants to meet uh, later on in the season? Especially this year, since it's the last year of Pac-12, yep. um, our goal is to win the conference. So. Um, going in and starting out strong is super important because uh, you learn sometimes you don't you don't get games back so we have to come out uh, with a bang and and outwork every opponent as best we can Uh, but yeah Pac-12 is highly competitive and I know everyone this being the last year really wants that ring so we're going to go for it. Yeah and looking ahead to the to the future going to the Big Ten and you have uh, an exciting new stadium in the works as well both those factors how how uh, or how does that change just the outlook of the program moving forward and and your day-to-day as well. Yeah we say here we want the most professional soccer environment that we can present and now we can back it up with a stadium uh, and with a wonderful conference so I think each day when we talk to recruits or talk to our own players uh, we say that that we want to give you the best soccer development that we possibly can uh, and now we have conference and an and arena to back it up with. You beat Michigan and Purdue already this season. That in the back of your mind a little bit, just letting the new conference know uh, we'll be there? Yeah, it's kind of funny because those were just already scheduled yeah. games before we knew. 
Uh, and I scheduled with Erwin, also one of my mentors uh, at Indiana, and now we're like, okay, we got to scratch these games. There's There's been a lot of changes in schedules, but... Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Just a few changes. And I wanted to ask you about Maribel Flores. She wins uh, Pac-12 player, of the Offensive Player of the Week this week. Just a freshman that's hit the ground running. What, what did you see in, in recruiting uh, that, that, that led you to believe, or, or when she got here, that she could be this impactful immediately? Yeah, so I saw Mary probably four years ago, um, back when I was at the other school. Recruit and early. Yeah. Soccer <laughs> recruits so early. Yeah, and she scored two goals, and it was just a random scrimmage. And she was probably one of the smaller players on the pitch, and I said, well, she had a really good day. Um, and then fast forward when I got the job here, it happened multiple times where I saw her in person and I said, who's that kid? And grabbed the brochure and she actually was formally committed elsewhere. Um, and I was like, dang, it's Maribel Flores. She's committed. And then I turned on the TV one day and it was U17 World Cup. And it's like, who's that player? She's really good. Oh, it's Maribel Flores. She's committed. Um, but then she decommitted and, and we had a chance to go after her. And so it was a player that, that we felt we must get here. And she combines well with others. Her coach told me, it just scores in the clutch moments, which we saw against Duke. A really, really tough finish that yeah. she put in a header. Um, so just amazing soccer player that, that connects well. We hear, we hear from coaches. Everyone, every coach kind of has their own little style and how they, you know, interact with the team. Are, are you the kind of coach that is kind of, you know, you, you watch from afar. You look like you can still get out there on the pitch and mix it up <laughs> with the team. Or what's, what's your kind of coaching style when you're out there? Yeah, I think, well, I come from a teaching background. That was my first job okay. out of college. So we do a lot of work in the classroom. We do a lot of work in film. Um, but I would say I, I'm not someone that wants to scream and yell at players. Uh, my belief is they need to come out and, and bring their best every single day. Okay. And do we tell them when the standards are not there? Yes. Um, but definitely, like, along with my staff, very cerebral and, and just looking at the game more at, at an analytical view. Um, but we like to play soccer, and, and we also like to keep the attacking firepower that SC's always had. So, yeah, dominate as much as possible. You still bandwidth in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll well, <laughs> the women of Troy hit the road this week. Uh, women's soccer headed to Salt Lake to take on Utah. Good to get them early on in the season. Don't need to be playing any uh, snow games late in, in, in the campaign. That'll be a good one. But big matches to come uh, still uh, on campus. So get to usctrojans.com and, and you can see their schedule and, and secure your tickets for that. Thank you, Coach, for joining us. Don't wait until game time to plan for retirement. Open your free iTrust Capital account today and get your crypto IRA. I trust Capital is the official cryptocurrency platform of the USC Trojans. And my smart and final, want the inside scoop on this game and all things Trojans? Be sure to sign up for the three torches presented by Smart and Final. It's a free newsletter that will hit your email inbox three times a week with game info, player insights, and more. Go to usctrojans.com slash three torches and sign up. Keely, your and our weekly football roundtable is next.
USC Trojan fans. Smart Stop Self Storage is ready for game day. Smart Stop Self Storage is committing to making the self storage experience easy and hassle free for all Trojan fans. Whether you're storing your Trojans tailgate gear, need temporary storage while moving to a new home, or need a storage solution for your business, we're here for you with convenient locations throughout Southern California. Smart Stop Self Storage, the smarter way to store. Visit smartstop.com to reserve your space today. Fight on. Fight on. Looking for the play of the day? That's easy. Fight on to victory with USC and fly on faster with ONT, the fastest and easiest airport experience in SoCal. Not to mention, Ontario International Airport has over 65 nonstop flights to more than 20 major destinations with less traffic coming in and out. In other words, getting here is a breeze and so is following our Trojans anywhere the season takes them. Because let's be honest, faster is always better when it comes to your airport. Start planning your next journey today at SoCalSoEasy.com. Covering the Trojans on the field. Caleb keeps it, rolls right, steps up, steps back, steps forward. Stop moving. Is damn near impossible. Luckily, they do it from behind the mic. It's, 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 it's tro- 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 Trojans Live on your home for Trojans football. AM 790 KABC. Trojans Live is brought to you by Monster Energy, Sean. The official energy drink of USC. It's chug, 6 chug, at chug, the night. Chug. Gets me through my Mondays. Long Monday, monster in. We're already through. You're not going to be able to fall asleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Unleash the beast, Sean. <laughs> Fight on Trojans and fly on with ONT. Ontario International Airport is a proud sponsor of our USC Trojans. Visit SoCalSoEasy.com to book your journey through ONT today. Jordan Moore, Sean, Cody, Max Brown, Keely Yor. What's going on? Hello. Uh, the news of the day, which I read on your uh, X account. Uh, <laughs> but. How you do it? Yeah, that's uh, you know that's how we do it when we're, when we're uh, promoting X these days. Sure. Uh, we're playing at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific next week, 10 a.m. 10 a.m. local time in Boulder. Uh, we've done it before. We did it a couple years ago in COVID when we played Arizona State. But uh, everyone's uh, reactions to uh, the the big noon kickoff get slot. I feel like you could feel it coming a little bit. The interesting thing though is that per Pac-12 rules, if a uh, if the kickoff is suggested before 11 a.m. local time, the opponent has to approve it. So this is something that Lincoln Riley did. Uh, it went across his desk and he said, yeah, put us on big noon kickoff. Let's let's go. And I think if uh, uh, what time does the Red River game kick off local? I think that sounds definitely right. before yeah. noon, maybe 11 a.m., but maybe 10 a.m. But I think maybe 11 a.m. I'm not sure if there's central time zone. But so I do think he is used to it in in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. A couple thoughts there. One, uh, you can't have it both ways as a Pac-12 fan. You can't complain about Pac-12 <laughs> after dark and then also sure. complain about the early slots because the whole world's going to see USC, which is great. Um, not that we need to worry about brand equity, but uh, the whole world's going to see us. And then two, I found it interesting talking with Lincoln on the side. I believe his practice schedule is not the same every day in that guys practice at different times. And I remember when I was here, the concern if you had a really early game and you were a night practicing team, was that a huge adjustment for your team? Maybe not as much for this squad because they're used to those different slots. I don't know if that would be the exact case. but So in fall camp, they did like 6 a.m. practices. Okay. Now they do afternoon practices. It varies by like an hour or two, but it's afternoons right now. So. Ooh, 9 o'clock, man. That big fella's going to have to get my monster energy going, man. I'm going to have to be... Uh... <laughs> no monster energy the night before. See, I, you got to uh, sleep. I mean, as an old guy, I'm all in. Yeah, I'm I, like, hey, we're going to be home by a decent time. Oh, it's much it. easier on me than, than this week when we'll, yeah. you know, the team won't get back. I just got to get the vocal something. cords warmed pissed. up nice and nice and early. I'll be, I'll be, I, I like the morning start, like you said. You get going. When I was a player, I loved playing early. I liked getting it going. You wait in the hotel all day, you know, Max. It's, it's just the worst yeah. thing. If you could play early and get it going, your energy high. That's the best time. But how do you do f- eating? Prior to a game that early, yeah, a lot of pasta at six a.m. How's that go down? A lot of six a.m. pasta. Yep, can't big, be doing can't be eggs. doing egg. You can't do eggs that eggs. close to game time. No nope. guy, I was eight. You guy. do eggs that Morning, close to game time. Night. All the all the stalls are omelet bar. <laughs> Come on, Rose omelet bar me. time. TMI. <laughs> Well, the opponent this week is Arizona State, and I guess it's sort of like an escalating schedule, but it is a slowly escalating schedule here. We might be working from, from 12 down you know, through the 11, 10, to the back of the league uh, a little bit. They had a rough one against Fresno State, minus eight turnover margin in one game. Goodness. Uh, they lost Jaden Rashada, so USC will likely see Drew Pine. 
uh, who played very well against USC last year as the Notre Dame quarterback. I mean, I heard on Twitter, which you take that for a grain of salt, Jesus. but I saw like Sponsored the f- by Twitter? Fourth, and <laughs> fourth and fifth string could be a potential on Saturday for yeah. a quarterback yeah. for ASU. And They're just open competition. You think? Their offensive line is decimated yeah. right well, that's now. That's why you have to get new quarterbacks in there when you don't have offensive line. <laughs> Fair. That's put the pieces together there, Sean. But it, yeah, I'm just it's going to be a field day for USC's front seven, I believe. You know, And that's why if you see Drew Pine, it's one thing to play with Notre Dame when you have a running game yeah. and those tight ends. I think that's why Drew Pine was efficient a year ago. It's not the case with Arizona State. I mean, so much news was brought about Colorado turning over their roster. ASU wasn't to the Colorado level, but a lot of new faces in there. And first-year head coach, we talked about how young he is, entirely different temperament than Lincoln Riley. If Lincoln Riley is, you know, very uh, – stays at level five <laughs> – Kenny Dillingham's always at a level 9 or 10, which when you're losing and then you combine that with the yelling and the and the get after you type of type of type of temperament makes for an interesting time for Arizona State. I think this game is more about the Trojans again. I mean just I mean the first three games are obviously about the Trojans, but this game specifically I think you're going on the road for the first time and that's like I th- we talked to Lincoln about. It. It's always a challenge. It doesn't matter your captains, it just you have to get everyone on the same page when you're on the road and that's tough. It's and it's everything. It's not just the football game, it's the build up, it's the travel, it's the what do I wear, it's the where am I supposed to be for the young guys and so it's all that stuff that's encompassing and it's good. Maybe it's not a, a super challenging game cuz like next year with LSU first game, I mean, you got to start. Yeah. You got to start yeah. that road trip fast early but uh, this year you're kind of like you said you're building into it and it's a good road trip i think for the for the first one tough place to play i loved playing there why it's hot um won't be hot i mean 7 30 it'll be yeah. nice yeah there's a portion of the stadium where you walk from outside and then you yeah. have to like walk through the concession stand to then get the to the field and that concession stand smelled exactly like where my high school state championships were played oh God, you know sense is <laughs> so the n- very n- nostalgic specific. oh yeah oh yeah no i love playing and it's like it was. It wasn't that hot when I was there. I don't know how it's going to be uh, this week. Well, you but. played. You played in the O three game. It was hot, and yeah. you guys and you w- fell behind early. So the O three and O five were probably the two most memorable games at ASU, maybe in the last. I, I loved it because years. Andrew Walters was just a statue back yeah, there, and I used to just, oh, we used to just have a field day. <laughs> he's not. He's going to be right there, and we're going to go get him. It's gonna be, that was that's what I loved about it. I mean, it was hot, and Lindell ran for a lot of yards. Matt Leinert, little come out party for Matt Leinert. I we think got hurt. Was. Well, he came back running out. You know, he was yeah. like Paul Pierce that game. So it's uh, it's, 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 <laughs> what? Matt, Matt that's Leinert not a compliment. Yeah, if you're getting the Paul Pierce that was a bailed shot. <laughs> Failed <laughs> shot. Yeah, probably our last time playing uh, at Arizona State, at, at least for a while. Uh, any 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 memories? Any sort of thoughts cool. on the USC ASU game? I mean, uh, Lane Kiffin was sort of in the news this uh, week. That was the last goodness. last game that he coached uh, at USC. Was at was at ASU. No, I'm trying to think of of anything notable, good for USC. I don't know. It's been an interesting time at U- at ASU. What were your What were your games at ASU that, that you? Uh, it was Berkovici getting it done and Taylor Kelly. So we lost. Hence why Both times. Kiff got fired. And I forget the second time. Remember, or- Adore Jackson had uh, Adore Jackson had a huge night on offense, and I remember that's when USC still had the chrome helmets, and so we came yes. in there Ooh. at night. And I remember that always USC when you watched that game. film. Did we? Okay, yeah. I, don't, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that was a big, Ro- Ro- Rojo went off. That was a big game. Rojo, that's right. It was like yep. over by the half. It just kind of snowballed. That's right, because I was playing. That's how you know we, were, we won. <laughs> I was playing there. Exactly. I got in the second half. There you go. Played against my uh, high school teammate. Yeah, it was good times. That's wow. right. I always feel like it's a program that uh, could have been better. I mean, they're, you know, they, they, they've never quite the sleeping the, giant. A little bit, yeah. I mean, year. I always sort of – sometimes I would compare, like, USC basketball to – ASU football in the sense of like, hey, you can you can kind of take you know at ASU you can kind of take anybody and you know there's you should have lots of talent right. and it's it's kind of a place that you should win. They never really have won consistently. They had the one Jake Plummer take year, the snake, but 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 even then, not, not nothing really consistent in their time in, in the league. Yeah, just nothing really memorable about uh, ASU football. I'm trying to think. I'm not trying to start a, a war with ASU football over here, but just not like, like you said, just uh, always a program that seems like on the cusp of maybe doing something yeah. and just kind of uh, pitters out a little bit. But uh, yeah, the Trojans have a chance here. Like I said, I think it's just a, it's just, it's just that first road game, getting it under your belt, making sure everyone's comfortable and uh, and executing in that same environment. And they're you know they're just still building into the season. USC's opponents though are. Uh, Two and eight so far. So, Ooh. you know, my big takeaway going into Stanford was we don't really know anything. Yeah. Still feel like 
we probably have things to learn. I'm not sh sure we're going to learn them on, on Saturday, but I, you know, you, it feels like no matter who the opponent, when you, when you play a 49, three half, yeah. you're pretty good. Yeah. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. Right. So you sort of did the best, but man, you just know it's coming. And that's the weirdest thing about this season. It's, this isn't like, Hey, yeah, it's not a great opponent this week. And there's only a couple down the road. It's like, Oh no, it's all of a sudden going to go from who knows to, just rank teams the rest yeah. of the way kind of thing. Yeah. It's it's uh, for me the goalposts keep moving cuz I thought Colorado was going to be a bigger test. I don't know if I feel the same way after watching oh. them against Colorado State. Coach, no, Coach no, Prime no. Oh. No. Put her on the list, Prime. No. Put her on the list. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Did you ammo. The, You're giving did, ammo are you guys right done run, throwing me under the bus here? No, I'm just. Yeah, I, I just think. Did you see? Even mom got into it this week. Mom was part of the speech. Like maybe Dion's mom's gonna yell at you. Who knows? That's fine. Maybe the Rock. Yeah. Oh goodness, they, that'd be fun. They poised yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be worth it. <laughs> yeah. They poised that question to the uh, Fox Big Noon kickoff squad, and none of them uh, answered it. Like, how far can Colorado go? Go. They're all afraid. none of them answered it because they <laughs> all knew the frog here. that exactly they're gonna be clipped out. But it is kind of an interesting week, and we'll talk about this on the Trojan Tailgate show. We're going to know a lot more about yes. everyone else by the end of Saturday. We may not know more about USC, but we're going to see Colorado at Oregon. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, we may be sitting here next Monday going, whoa, wait a second. They hung with Oregon up in Eugene, in which case it's a huge test for USC. Yeah. Or maybe they get exposed. But there's several teams. Notre Dame's playing Ohio State. It's on USC schedule. Washington State, Oregon State, USC doesn't play either, but they play each other. UCLA plays Utah. Yeah. Some answers are starting to come this weekend. Yeah, and we'll be sitting here going, wow, Dion was right for calling out Keeley. No, just kidding. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not. <laughs> I can't wait for that. I really hope that, that happens. <laughs> just, just the calling out. I don't want. I guess. I guess Colorado would have to win for that to happen. So we don't want that. But uh, I do look forward to any Keeley Dion Sanders <laughs> confrontation. Like a I don't. <laughs> great situation for our show. All right, we're back with uh, Sean's favorite segment, the over under, to wrap up Trojans Live next. Let's get you back to more Trojans Live on your home for Trojans football, AM 790 KABC. Trojans Live is sponsored by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC football. And our over-under is presented by Pachanga Resort Casino, proud partner of USC Athletics, Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, who's really getting into the over-under these days, Max Brown, Keely Yore. 
All right, Sean. I actually right, sort of it. took one from your book this week because, as you, well, as you because should. I'm not putting it on a half. I'm going to put it on a whole number. Mm. Okay. There are eight teams currently ranked in the Pac-12. Okay. That is two thirds of the league, yes. Sean. Over under six, which means you can't have six. So over under six, and they will finish the season in the top twenty-five. Ooh. I will take so five or fewer. Five or fewer. Seven or more. Uh, so I like six. <laughs> I bet uh, you do. Yeah, I thought tough. about that. It was going to be six and a half, and I was like, you know what, Sean's just going to take the under and say six. So we're going to put it at six. Yeah, I'll take. You know what? It's the it's the goodbye tour in the Pac-12. I'm going to give us the I'm going to give us the seventh one. I'm going over Jordan. I'm going under, ah. not because of uh, quality of teams, but there's just not the cakewalk wins in the Pac-12 this year. Ironically, we have the two, it looks like, maybe Cal, but Cal actually showed up well um, two weeks ago. But it just feels like we're a recipe for like four, seven, and five teams that are going to be like right on the outside looking in, and I think we're, we're, did, we're did, below did it. Did you see Arizona's schedule? I know you're big, big on Arizona. Yeah, brutal. I saw. Yeah, somebody tweeted, "Enjoy this week because this week they have Stanford, I think, at home, and then I think they have eight straight ranked." They're Exhibit A. They could be the best five and seven team in America. They might be four and four, eight. If that's a four and eight team, right? That's a bowl team. That roster is a bowl roster. They could be four and eight. Four and eight with a quarterback that would start for Alabama. Ooh. Quarterback start for Alabama. NFL left tackle receivers that are legit. Like, <laughs> yeah, T Mac made a heck of a catch. Yeah, I saw that. Big Did you say over or under? Under with five. One thing remains true always: Pac-12 cannibalism. Yeah. So I am going to take the under. Yeah, and I think that that probably is what it comes down to. I'll take the under oh, as well, over, guys. Since when do you participate? Or I, do you? Let's go seven. They want me to, to to participate because there's now accountability. Good. Executive producer Drew to Hart's word of the year. We love so accountability. He's, he's taking notes, and so I have to I have to chime in. And Good. if you if you don't bat over 500, that's Keeley's spot. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's coming back to week four's Trojan Live to remember who. But I like over six. Under. I like yeah. He's he's there's a doc. There's a Hi, doc. Drew. If he's I like six. So so if there's five, who are your five? Uh, USC, USC, Washington, uh, Oregon, one, two, three. Yeah. Then I'll go Utah finds a way to hang in there and, uh, Oregon State. So you think Oregon State beats Washington State this weekend? I do. It's on the Palouse, yeah? I do. I'm going to go with everything he said except for switch Oregon State and Washington State. I think it's so hard to win at Wazoo. Yeah. I feel like, I don't know, just going to put that there. Wazoo's killed some teams too. They killed that Colorado State team that, uh, that Colorado struggled with. So that's just on the record, Sean. Uh, no one believes in Colorado. Dang it. Go prime. <laughs> who, who, so if you have seven, you're adding on who? You're just everybody. Who's the one you're taking off? UCLA? Yeah, no Bruins on my schedule. I like that call by Jordan. Thanks, Jordan. <laughs> All right, Trojans Live is a production of USC Sports Properties and Playfly Sports. Executive producers, the aforementioned Drew DeHart. Producers, Rick Cutler. Engineer back in the studio. Was it Herman? Thank you, Herman. Thank you to everyone involved. Thank you for watching and following along here on YouTube and listening on 790 KBC. We'll see you next Monday. We'll see you on Saturday. Big game. Beat the Sun Devils. Fight on. You can't spell victorious without you. S-C. Fourth and nine. This is the ball game. Takes the snap. Steps up in the pocket. Throws for the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, USC. Trojans Live was presented by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Make sure to check back in next Monday night at 7 for more Trojans Live. Exclusively on your home for all things Trojan, AM 790 KABC. And follow us on the USC Trojan Media Network. Trojans Live is an exclusive presentation of Play Fly Sports on AM 790 KABC and the USC Trojan Media Network.